So in the last video, the genre was Screamo with the band Algae Bloom, and now we are switching it over to the genre Shoegaze and LSD in the Search for God. I hope you guys enjoy. If you are a fan of Shoegaze, chances are you've heard of the San Francisco band LSD and the Search for God. LSD and the Search for God originated when lead band members Andy Liss and Chris Fifield met around 2005 and became friends. After some recordings that they produced fairly quickly after meeting, they managed to get in touch with Michigan's Mind Expansion Records. And with the help of Mind Expansion Records, on January 16, 2007, the band published their debut self-titled album consisting of five tracks and 22 minutes in length. In this album, we have Chris Fifield on guitar, Sophia Campbell on vocals, Caleb Rush on bass, Scott Ebert Hart on drums, and Andy List on guitar and vocals. Resembling the sounds of Shoegaze Pioneer's My Bloody Valentine, this EP has a very dreamy and psychedelic Shoegaze sound with some West Coast flavor to it. With the washed out production that really emphasizes the slow paced guitar work, there are themes of love and breakup in their lyrics, sung by the combination of female vocals vocalist Sandy Denton and the male vocals by Andy List can be heard in their tracks like Starting Over. This EP really fits in with the 90s golden age of shoegaze, which is probably due to the band's time spent backing up the telescopes when they went on tour in the US in 2006, and also having connections with the great Spaceman 3, who were psychedelic shoegaze pioneers during the 90s. List states in an interview with the Big Show Takeover, when I met Jason Pierce of Spaceman 3 and Spiritualized in 1994 or 95, he told me he considers his music to be, if anything, soul music. So although the band does not directly come from the 90s golden age of shoegaze, they still have a lot of authenticity in the genre. Although many people still argue today that LSD and the Search for God are just a copy of something Slow Dive or My Bloody Valentine has already been doing. But some would even say that LSD and the Search for God is part of a 2000 shoegaze revival with other bands like Candy Claws and Sunny Day and Glasgow making shoegaze quote unquote cool again. So here are just a couple of reviews of their 2007 self-titled album by some pretty important people. Losing Today states, a full-on shoegazer assault of crazed guitar sounds coupled with the ethereal male female vocals. It is an excellent remedy for those who still miss Ride, My Bloody Valentine, and Chapter House. San Francisco Weekly states, psychedelic shoegazers. And Road Records state, an absolute treat for lovers of all things shoegazy and dreamy. Superb. Now even though this EP didn't initially gain much attention from important music publications, it still had a very niche cult following online. The reason for LSD and the Search for God becoming a sort of buzz band was probably due to the fact that their next EP would not come out for eight and a half years after their debut self-titled EP. July 4th, 2014, the band posted a music video for this song titled Heaven, which would be the first track in their next EP they would not publish till January 15th, 2016 under Deep Space Records and Mind Expansion. The EP was titled Heaven Is A Place. And a good word to explain this album is euphoric through the band's use of reverb, fuzz, feedback, and the combined male and female vocals that flow perfectly in with each other. This album will send you into eternal bliss. This album received a mixed reaction from the fans with comments saying the album's production was too similar to their debut, the songwriting was too straightforward, the guitars were too flat, and overall monotonous and lacking complexity. And even though it did not get as much attention and love as their debut album, it is still an impressive album overall. The band would follow this album with a European and American tour in 2016. Even though the band's still touring, it seems as though they went on their annual hiatus after the release of this album. So is this all there is for the discography of the band, or will they resurface to create another project? We don't know. The band keeps an overall very low encrypted profile on the internet, 
mostly just posting on their Twitter and Facebook shows that they're playing at, which I guess adds to the mystery of the band. I did, though, manage to find a few interviews they have done, which give us a little more insight to the band that help us figure out more of, like, the personality behind them and stuff. In an interview with The Big Takeover magazine in 2016, Andy Liss answers a few interesting questions. When asked about his inspiration, he states, Growing up, I loved Johnny Marr and the Smiths. Chris and I overlap there. In terms of my own musical progression, what changed it all was listening to Verve before they added the, the, and went downhill. Nick McCabe's guitar work on their first self-titled EP was just out of this world. The Swirlies, Slow Dive, and Baitler Space all happened while I was about 20, living in New York and going to school. I went out most nights to see music and went to class, or didn't. I liked Luna and caught Dean every chance I could. I also got into experimental stuff like Flying Saucer Attack, who I was completely nuts about. And this other question that he answered was actually pretty interesting because I wanted to know the answer too. He was asked about the name of the band and what it means, and he responds with, I thought of it a long time ago, and when I started this project, it seemed perfect. The psychology of perception with band names is hilarious. I hated the name My Bloody Valentine when I first heard it, and with The Grateful Dead, I expected something more evil. But when something speaks to you in a different way, what the words mean isn't important. And in another interview with Negative Feedback, posted on May 9th, 2014, on his blog post, LSD and the Search for God are asked, You've been getting more attention with shoegaze fans. Why do you think that is? And Andy List responds, Our music is something that we believe in and we feel. I don't think it's surprising that people are moved by it. We like our music. We'd rather play music we all like. And I like the music that seems strange and weird to other people. So the fact that people don't like it, it's no sweat. I don't really know why we've been getting more attention, but it makes sense. We feel like we're trying to make something that's real and expresses what's going on with us. So I think that's what's attractive, you know, human expression. From this interview alone, we can kind of get a view inside the band's thought process and attitude towards music. It almost feels like the band and Andy specifically really just have a love for making music and expressing their musical talent. This could be the reason why they are not so caught up in the industry aspect of music and have only released two EPs in their career so far. And like I mentioned before, it is unsure as of now if any music is to come, considering their last Facebook post was on April 22nd, 2020 and last tweet being February 21st, 2020. But hey, that just adds to the mystery of the band, which I feel like is why people are so drawn to them. 